Hi. Or goodbye, I guess is more appropriate. Not like totally goodbye, never gonna see you again. But I'm going to be posting far less in the way of these, these style of videos. Uh, by this style, I mean uh, videos shot in a landscape uh, perspective, or I call it the horizontal perspective, that, uh, that are popular on YouTube. What happened, to, I, my first videos, I first shot a few YouTube videos back in 2014, I believe it was, when I was uh, teaching yoga in Singapore, and I put up a couple of yoga tutorials which I enjoyed making. It was kind of a fun thing, and people still watch some of them, too. Uh, but I didn't have time to pursue video making. I had a job. Well, fast forward to 2020, and that job went away when I had to close my yoga studio. And I thought, well, there's an opportunity to do something that I had some fun with, and like millions of other people around the world, started, I started shooting videos. And I thought I had a little bit of an advantage in that I had a lot of stories. You know, I'm uh, retired from the New York City Fire Department where I was a firefighter for seven years and, uh, and a lieutenant, an officer for another 13 years. So I, I had a lot of stories from that and, uh, and other places. You know, I'm, I'm an old guy. You know, I've lived a long life and I've had a lot of exciting things to talk about over, uh, over that, that I've learned over that period of time. And I started telling my stories. Well, I've told all my stories. And recently I started making kind of like self-help style videos like, hey, this is what I've done to be a reasonably successful guy kind of video. And uh, they've not done badly actually, but then my heart really isn't in it. And then something really interesting happened just, just a few days ago, about, about a week ago. Uh, I was watching a Netflix show, a series uh, called Shot in the Dark. Shot in the Dark is a story about independent videographers in Los Angeles who uh, follow around first responders, cops, firemen, ambulance, uh, ambulance people, uh, and, and they, they chase them. They, they often show up before them at scenes of emergencies and, uh, and they seek to get video footage that they sell to uh, TV stations, local TV news stations. These videographers are colloquially known as stringers. We had stringers in New York too. And we had a very low opinion of them in the fire department and the police department too, and I suspect EMS. Uh, we called them bottom feeders. I think that's how we felt about them. I enjoyed this show a lot. It was a meaningful show. I mean, there were parts of it that were just ridiculous. It became like fast and furious for videographers. It's just, you know, shot after shot after shot of them racing around in their tricked out muscle cars. but. Uh, beyond that, what they did is they, they showed first responders in, in this TV show. Now, the subject of the TV show were the stringers. So the first responders were anecdotal. So they presented the, the cops, the firemen, the EMS workers, the ambulance people. Uh, they, they presented them without spin. And viewers of these shows got to see, viewers like me, got to see these first responders uh, without any, any spin. Very often media people, movies and TV people, have a stereotypical way of presenting uh, cops and firemen and ambulance people, and they very often do it from a negative perspective, especially for the cops. And what happened in this show is because the, the, the uh, first responders were anecdotes, you got to see them as they were, which primarily they are intelligent, compassionate, hardworking, really good people out there doing really good stuff. And it was, it was a nice show for me to watch because of that. And it was very nostalgic, reminded me of a lot of the things that I did. And it reminded me of some stringers too that I've had some negative experiences with in the past. I, I, I wrote a story about that. I'll link the story in the description if you wanna go read it. It's on my writer's site, Cora.com. And what the show did, it reminded me of the values that I lived from as a firefighter, as an officer in the New York City Fire Department, and the good values. Uh, and it's not that I don't live from those values anymore, but I was doing something that I, you know, the other part of the show, it reminded me of values that I didn't like, the bottom feeders, the stringers, the videographers. I mean, they're making their living and they're not doing anything illegal, so, you know, fine, go do that. But it's like, as one of them put it, this is a quote, I shoot 
people's misery. And then he also added to that, he said, I don't hope for people to die, but if they do, it makes a better story. You know, and that's where they're coming from. And it's like kind of creepy to me. I don't, you know, that, that's not my values. Let's just leave it at that. And that takes me back to YouTube and videos. I've told all my stories. I've told way more than my stories and I'm stretching it. And I've gotten caught up into the YouTube video making kind of environment where I'm trying to put out a video at least once a week and I'm looking for more stories, more bigger, better, you know, stories that will catch your attention, keep you watching for all the statistical watch time and all that. You know, it's like, that. I don't want to do that. You know, but here I was getting caught up in it. And the example that really, you know, kind of hit me was uh, about two, maybe three weeks ago, I was watching a video. A lot of uh, the people that watch my channel know Old Dog New Tricks, Paul in the Philippines. He's, uh, he's an old guy like me doing videos, only he's very charming and a lot more successful than I am. And he uh, featured a guy on his channel who uh, said he was a hospital administrator here in Bangkok in 2010. And he started telling these very uh, outlandish stories about his experience back then. And I'm listening and the facts of his story weren't matching up with what I knew to be true. So I did a little digging and it turns out the guy was a hospital administrator back in the States where he embezzled $1.7 million and was uh, sentenced to uh, 10 years in uh, federal prison over, the, over, over those actions. I mean, the char there's technical charges and all that other stuff, but the guy went to jail and I suspect served his time because now he's back in the Philippines doing these interviews on, on, on Paul's channel, Old Dog's channel, also Mark Thornton had him on and Filipina P had him on. And he is, he's a very charming and articulate guy, and he's also completely full of shit. <laughs> it's like he's making up a lot of stories. I thought, I'm going to expose him, right? And I started digging into the information, and I got a lot of information in the guy. And he is just that. He's a, he's a con man. He's literally a con man. He's an ex-convict, and, uh, and he was a thief. And, uh, and, and he's telling stories. And before I started shooting the video, I thought to myself, why am I doing this? And the reason is, is because I thought it would be a popular video. I thought it would be something that might get a lot of hits and a lot of interest. And I'd get a lot of uh, viewers from that genre of, uh, of video people. Uh, and, and I thought, what's the guy guilty of? I mean, he's guilty of being a bullshitter on the internet. I mean, why, why am I even interested in going down that road? I don't want to be a bottom feeder. So I'm out of stories. I still write. I, my, I'm doing very well on Cora.com. I have 1.7 million uh, uh, viewers on, on Cora.com, which is where I post my essays. I also started doing photography and I'm surrounded by young women here in, uh, in my household in Bangkok that you know, love modeling for me. And I've made a lot of, you know, a lot of photographs that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, you know, looking back at that, I'm proud of my writing. I look back at my videos and some of them are kind of cringy and I'm not so, you know, I'm not loving them. And I, and I certainly don't want to go down a road. I, I don't want my values, my personal values to, to a road uh, in service to this YouTube thingy. I'm not shutting the channel down, I'm leaving everything up. And if I have a story to tell that presents well in a horizontal video, I'll put it up. But for the most part, I'm just gonna be putting up short videos, doing my essays and my photography, which is on a bunch of other sites that I'll link in the description as well if you wanna go take a look at that stuff. Uh, thank you for those of you who have subscribed to the channel and those of you who have watched. And uh, as I said, if some kind of theme pops up that I think is worthy of me spending some time making a video about it, I will. Uh, I do appreciate the people who have been loyal viewers and have commented often. And uh, so, yeah, thanks. And uh, so, uh, yeah, see you when I see you.